The Gifted Season 1, Episode 6 Thoughts. This episode is called Got Your Six, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything X-Men, that's live action at least, leading up to and including this episode. And yeah, the the let's see, the show itself is rated TV 14, and so will this video be. Let's dive right in. So yeah. Yet another flashback. And yeah, this is four years ago, and yeah, you know, the the John and the others are literally doing nothing wrong. This is charity. Like they're they're not taking a victory lap. They're they're asking for donations to help people, and it still angers this guy because bigotry is not logical. It is purely based on emotion and xenophobia. You you know, a bigot hates the the individual or group that they are bigoted towards and even the most positive of gestures can be turned into something bad in their mind and yeah you know John points out that he served his country you know two tours and this is indeed there there are a number of African Americans and you know homosexuals you know LGBTQ plus people in general who have, yeah, served in, in wars and were treated as if they were nothing. And, yeah, very intense with the, the pipe bomb. And, again, you know, sadly, there are a lot of violent attacks on, you know, today we're especially hearing about trans people and, and you know, Asian immigrants to America and the the I, I will say I thought that the scene was going to culminate in someone blaming John for the pipe bomb there was maybe you know maybe someone happened to snap a, a picture of it as John has it in his hand and, and throws it or something like that because there was actually you know there was this event where the proud one of the proud boys you know, to, to escalate violence, because that is what they do, that is their raison d'etre, you know, he, yeah, he wielded a hammer, he was gonna, yeah, bash someone's head in, you know, crack their skull, and the hammer ended up in the hand of, I want to say it was an Antifa member, who was literally, like, they were trying to get it away from there, they were trying to disarm this guy, and, yeah, a picture, you know, several pictures of that exist, and I want to say, I believe it was Andy No. Certainly, this is the kind of thing he would do. He like tweeted the, a picture of an Antifa member holding a hammer, and he was like, "Oh, look, Antifa brought a hammer to a fight." You know, and and Cody Johnson, American hero, you know, yeah, corrected him and apparently got blocked on Twitter by Andy No for it. Wow, that is like. I'd like to think that if someone corrected me on misinformation like that, I would have the, the guts to actually, like, yeah, admit that I made a mistake and, and you know, not just, yeah, took tail and run like a baby. Anyway, yeah, and, and the... Um, Back in the current day, back in at the at the base, you know they they talk about well, you know, using pulse like that. You know they they've changed their game. Maybe we need to change ours. Can we get Sam Rice here? It's time for a game changer. And let's see. Yeah, the good boy. Sit, stay, and yeah, Wes. Silky smooth at at flirting like that is just yeah, and I appreciate you know the the moment that I heard his name was Wes I was a little like oh no this is like West on Heroes they're only one letter apart 
and and apparently Christians love a lowercase t, so I'm very concerned, but no, thankfully he is not this kind of wooden, bland, nothing of a love interest. And it is, of course, like... Jack didn't actually do anything. Like, this is... A, I, I guess it's a proximity thing, because, like... I don't think they... They haven't even mentioned him in, like, an episode or two. Jack, Lauren's boyfriend cool with with Andy which you know I know a lot of young women really want the the you know a lot of young straight women really want the man they're with to be you know to get along with the male members of her family and and I, I mean Lauren hasn't done anything to be fair it's just you know yeah her eyes have done a thing or two but she hasn't physically otherwise done anything. Maybe she'll shut him down in an upcoming episode. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're setting up a love triangle. It just feels a little... I mean, to, as far as I recall, Jack has not actually done anything wrong. Like, you, you'd have a... Like, if, if the moment that he realized that they were, were mutants... I mean, I get... Oh, hold on. Hmm. Fair enough. I guess it was the fact that he was like, we have to leave when she, you know, she's like, but my brother is in there. That that might be it. Yeah, fair enough. That's a pretty, that's, that's a significant mark against, yeah, fair enough. And Wes has not done anything that we've seen that is even remotely that, yeah, that callous. And, yeah, um, Polaris talks about combat training. I mean, there's a certain, there's logic in what she says. And, yeah, Clarice finally, you know, yeah, John comes in and, you know, yeah, talks about how they need her help again. And she's like, are you serious right now? Are you really not? Are we not going to talk about the elephant in the room? The the fact that you you lied to me, like you, yeah, you told Dreamer not to, but once you realized what she'd done, you didn't come clean immediately. And and yeah, you know, he's like, but we needed your help, and she points out, you're not making things any better. This is exact, yeah, and. Yeah, tele she teleports out, and, and yeah, we can absolutely understand, you know, like, the reason she was on the run in the first place was because there were people who didn't see her as human. They didn't recognize her humanity. This is kind of, you know, it's, I mean, I guess it's in the opposite direction, because the, the people who had her, you know, yeah, the reason she was being chased was people who thought she was, you know, like, subhuman, whereas here, they're, they're not seeing, you know, John and, and Dreamer are not seeing her as subhuman. They're essentially thinking, oh, she's superhuman, but they're only focusing on the super part. They're not thinking about, you know, how is this affecting her emotionally and yeah, you know, it, it, an argument could be made that, you know, she could be helping other members of the, but, you know, the leader betrayed her trust. John is the leader of this chapter of the Mutant Underground. He betrayed her trust. You know, if she's going to stay there following, you know, yeah, following orders and, and doing what he asks. Yeah, this, this breach of trust was, was very significant. And let's see. Then we have the. Um, yeah, uh, we see, you know, Jace is, is kind of out of control. You know, he's. Yeah, he was put on mandatory leave and he's showing up and acting like he's still a regular agent. So, you know, yeah, it really has gotten to him. 
And yeah, Dr. Campbell is back. And yeah, Garrett Dillahunt does not disappoint. You know, I the day that I feel disappointed in a in a performance of his, I will be shocked. Like that, yeah. Um so the let's see. Yeah, you know, he they they let's see. Yeah, this time Jace is the one who contacts him and says, you know, let's work together, which yeah, you know, back when he was following the rules, you know, as much as they already really pushed you know they were they were already quite ridiculous but now you know he's not even following those rules and that is uh, you know so yeah now he's willing to work with uh, dr campbell and this is of course the kind of thing that does happen once you start you know this is one of the rare cases where the slippery slope is not a fallacy once you start violating civil rights that can really snowball and yeah, so, you know, really, yeah, again, super relevant and, and very nicely handled. And let's see. The. Yeah, um, I like the line let's not let the peat bucket come between us. And let's see. Right, and, and yeah, you know, we have the thing of like, you know, Andy insists, you know, I can be I can help here. And you know, Kate is, is against it and, and Reed goes to her and is like, Maybe this is good is a good thing. I mean he's been having emotional problems recently. We can have another son. And See, yeah, and they're they're stopped at a, at a checkpoint, and you know he's the the driver is like, oh, you know, me and my son, and and I'm, 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 and my daughter. That's that's the noise you heard back there, and yeah, very clever that Marcos. So, what was the line before I release light? I absorb it. If I absorb enough of it, yeah, very clever. Because yeah, the the cops like, what's going on with this flashlight? Why isn't it? You know, but he's not gonna think. Oh, there's a mutant back there. This is definitely you know because it's it's such a weird occurrence. The the light not yeah, and right and and we get mention. You know, uh, John wants to to live up to his father now the let's see the I'm um, um oh right okay uh I was going to say that I think no it's okay it's his what is it only his brother or was there more than one Let's see, because the, yeah, um, certainly his brother is the the mutant known as Warpath, a serious badass in, in the comics. And he actually made an appearance in Days of Future Past. Brief, but yeah, he was really, really cool there as well. And... Um, let's see. I think that might. Yeah. Um, but I'm guessing. Yeah, their their father also a badass, and maybe maybe in this in the continuity of the show, it was his father who was Warpath. But yeah. And let's see yeah I I like you know the the conversation between Andy and Reed about you know he he insists I was always proud of you you know and that is something there's a lot of young people who feel that their parents are not proud of them you know when yeah in reality it's not 
necessarily that our parents don't take pride in us it's you know that they 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 push us because they see that we can be more than what we are but to us it sometimes comes across as oh i'm just never good enough you know so yeah i i really appreciate the emotional intelligence and the writing here it's a scene that clearly understands both you know reed is not being the the obnoxious you know too proud to be emotionally vulnerable father and Andy is not being the whiny, obnoxious teenage boy, you know, so, so, yeah, very, very nicely done. There's a lot of media that would have them behave in much more, yeah, just frustrating and not constructive ways. And, yeah, I quite appreciate, you know, Kate wants to, to make a school for these young mutants, you know, I and and it feels in character, you know. She, I forget if she current, or I guess currently she's not, but I think she was a nurse until the events of the the show. So yeah, you know, she is someone who cares about people. And yeah, we see the the fight training. Now I'd like to think that Pilar is only selected. Yeah, right, right, because we saw earlier that she was, like, finding out what their powers were. She didn't just give a blank blanket, you know, if you'd like to, you know, try to try out for combat, come on in. No, she, she did handpick these, you know. And, yeah, that first one, very nice job. And then she gets really angry with Wes for not taking it seriously. And for a second there, I was like, what did you think he was going to do with his, you know, um, image projection powers? But if right before she throws, he, like, makes an illusion where it seems like there's, you know, maybe three of him, and then they go in three different directions, she's not going to know which one to, to throw at, and, you know, after she's thrown he's going to reveal i wasn't any of the three of them like we you know later we see with the truck he was hiding that the whole way you know so yeah that is a uh, fair enough and and yeah if you're teaching teenagers something important you may need to impress upon them this is important you know stop playing around you know quit playing around and the yeah, you know, Wes is trying to impress Lauren, so he's being, a, you know, yeah, he's he's doing something that he obviously shouldn't be doing. He's he's ignoring rules and such, because that's, yeah, that's a very straight teenage boy trying to impress his crutch, crush kind of move. And, yeah, um, before... Polaris can throw, you know, at, at Lauren, you know, yeah, Kate steps in and is like, I don't remember giving you permission to throw a saw blade at my daughter. And, you know, Lauren is like, Mom, you're being so embarrassing. Let her throw tools at me. Which, again, you know, in Polaris's defense... Lauren can create these force field shield things. And let's see. Yeah, quite good conversation when, you know, Marcos and Reed talk about, you know, how to be a good father. And again, I really appreciate Marcos is not saying, I don't know, maybe I'll run away. There's way too much media that's about, you know, oh, you know, Guys just don't stick around. Lots of, you know, I, I can't speak to it myself. I don't have kids. But a lot of guys are 100% willing to, to stick around. And it's just so much more interesting. It's a much more interesting story to explore the, the young father or father-to-be trying to figure out how to be a good father. You know, I 100% acknowledge that there are sadly a number of, of fathers who leave behind their kids and it can cause a lot of trauma. I'm not saying that it isn't happening. I'm not saying 
that we shouldn't call that out. But once we're like telling fictional stories, like we have so many, we have so many that are about the the yeah these the the kids who were left behind by their their fathers. I don't think we have enough yet of stories that are about you know he's he's trying he's trying to be a good father because that's also like there's only so much you can do to convince a guy who might leave his kid behind not to do that you know and yeah you know read you know some of what he says comes across as as good advice again not speaking from experience and I like the little detail that you know Andy was just pretending to be asleep because he kind of wants to hear his father say this stuff and his father is not going to say it directly to Andy you know but to a you know a father to be yeah he he will actually say this and let's see yeah and i guess let's see so reed says this thing about you know no matter what you do they will always love you you know and that is like yeah, because he's talking to someone he knows to be a good person. That's the kind of thing like a narcissist would take that in a really bad direction. But he knows that Marcos is someone who cares about the, the people close to him. So he's saying, you know, try not to be too anxious. You know, figure out what is best and then do that thing. And let's see... Yeah, um, Dr. Campbell shows up to, to Jace and, you know, he tells, so, got you your job back. Here's the, oh, just a second, you know. I hope you don't mind that I brought, you know, a mutant who's under my personal control. I just want the files on the Struckers, you know. We talked about them. I mean, I, I could call my friends in Washington and have you dis reinstated you know so yeah that's very very nicely done and they found someone who really looks like he kinda looked like a, a meth head or something the the mutant that's with Campbell so yeah um, I've watched TV shows before so I am fairly confident that is not the last time we're going to see him. We're going to find out what powers he has and why. Because Campbell only brought the one. You know, that's a that's a choice, I feel like. He could probably have brought more. And, yeah, you know, this deal's getting worse all the time. <laughs> I like the... I really like Marcos and, and Polaris together, and this thing of, you know, how's the kid? Miss him already. Well, I could send you a picture of the morning sickness, you know, and he's like, I'd love that. Love you. Love you too. You know, I, again, we need more media like this that shows, yes, young men are 100% capable of emotional vulnerability under the right circumstances and you know we don't have that this garbage thing of you know oh, guys will never be the first to say I love you not if you keep putting pictures you know in, in all these movies and TV shows where the guy never says it first that tells us young men oh I guess I'm not supposed to say it first even if I feel it even if I want to say it first I guess I won't say it first then you know sometimes you gotta put media out there that actually shows the way the way the world the way we want it to be you know not only these like yes absolutely there's a lot of I think a, a lot of the worst problems in the world come from straight white cis men who refuse to be emotionally vulnerable who can't let go of of anger everybody feels anger it's natural to feel anger but you gotta let it go you can't let it drive your actions when you know yeah in the in the given situation if you are currently in a fight with someone yeah maybe you know holding on to the anger for that 
but some young men you know will hold on to the anger for years and for decades and end up taking out their anger on people who had nothing to do with people who may not even have been born when they initially you know when when someone did something to hurt them and that's why they're angry and let's see yeah uh, I quite appreciate Polaris you know Talk, yeah, talking to Kate and, and saying this is the new normal. This is as close to normalcy as your kids are going to get now that they're mutants. And, you know, yeah, I really appreciate this thing of, again, Kate could so easily have been this really, really obnoxious character, but, you know, it does make a lot of sense. She's trying to hold on to, because, yeah, the the... It's a bad situation. She's not saying, you know, let's just pretend nothing is happening. She's just saying they got to hold on to something. And again, you know, she's a nurse. She she has some, like, yeah. They have to learn some about how trauma can affect children and teenagers, you know. So... Yeah, she she has literally studied it, and it is absolutely true. There, you know, it's it can be extremely difficult to heal trauma inflicted upon someone when they were a child or teenager. And let's see. The, yeah, um, Lauren and Wes you know, talk about how difficult it was for her to hide who she was, and, you know, maybe it was actually worse than, you know, again, really excellent scene, love when media acknowledges, you know, female pain, and I like the thing about, you know, she, she wishes for Florence, and she's like, that's, that's Rome, I, I see the Vatican back there, did you make the Pope moon us? And, you know, he's like, I saw it in the commercial, you know, I don't know about this. And But, yeah, again, so smooth. This guy, yeah. And and I appreciate, you know, he, he made the water move. And let's see. Yeah, very, very cool when, when Andy manages to, to take out a wall and... Again, you know, he makes a good point. He could be useful, but they, you know, they made a plan. They got a, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, uh, Reed is still struggling with, you know, the, they managed to, to steal the stuff. And, yeah, he's like, you can't do that. <laughs> you want to leave him a thank you note? And just, yeah. And, and good detail that, you know, he's cutting, he's using the light powers, Marco says, to cut through, you know, to cut his way into the computer. But he's got to be careful not to, to rush it because he might destroy the hard drive. So, yeah. Another good detail. And, and yeah, um, they talk about, you know, we're already at 78% excess capacity. And now there's more, but, yeah, they might not have a choice, but, to, you know, it's the right thing to do to help them. And and Dreamer insists, you know, no, we, we did the right thing with, with Clarice. And, yeah, I, I really appreciate that it's not, there's, there's a lot of American media where the idea that someone's emotions... You know, th yeah, they act like if if the situation is bad enough, without a doubt, people's emotions don't matter. We just do what we got to do and deal with it afterwards. And sometimes that is true, you know. Like, I would definitely say World War II was something where as much as, you know, obviously it was terrible... You know, it was necessary to stop the Nazis. It still is. The the yeah um, the Nazi movement today is not the exact same. I, w I will acknowledge, but it's still extremely dangerous. But yeah, the the 
there's a lot of American media that doesn't allow for the for this discussion. I really appreciate, and this is you know this is a discussion that John and, and Dreamer have had for for several episodes now. You know, underlining how important of a, a discussion is, and yeah. Uh, Marcos calls in. There's a cop that's been following them for miles now. Another really tense scene, and yeah, Lauren insists she can help with the the truck, despite Kate's reluctance to to let her. Right, I I quite like the the line. You know, Andy is like, but I can I can do something with my powers, and Reed says maybe right now. The answer is not your powers. Maybe it's being a team, you know. And and that is again like when you're young, you know, once you discover the thing that really works for you, yeah, it's it's the thing of you know. Once you got that hammer, everything looks like a nails. And and that's again where you know it's not always parents. Sometimes it's siblings or or others, but yeah, sometimes we need someone to to reel us back in. And yeah. And yeah, um, someone points out, you know, to Jace, but you know, court order. So yeah, he's he's breaking all the rules. And let's see, but but yeah, the the thing, you know, very clever. This thing of, you know, the the, yeah, splitting the truck into whilst in re you know making it look like you know it's going left, it's going right, and in reality, it's heading straight. And, you know, Polaris taking care of the bullets. That truck driver really trusts them. That is holy crap. But yeah, the the and and Lauren makes the the shield for the for the truck to go over. And I appreciate, you know, Polaris is like, you know, have you done this? You know, could you do it? And Lauren's like, I've never done it to that extent. And Polaris is like, I believe in you. You can do this. Just dig deep, you know. She knows. She, you know, I'm sure she couldn't always stop bullets. You know, that was not like she woke up one day and was like, oh, that's, you know, no. She, she trained and practiced and, and knows this stuff. And, let's see. Yeah. Um, Kate compliments Reed on his soup. And it is kind of sweet, the thing with, you know, the, the ring. And let's see. Right, and and yeah, at the near, near the very end, you know, Andy suggests he and Reed play Monopoly, and that you know, very very sweet moment. You know, last time Monopoly came up, you know, Lauren was like, "We can't, you know, you can't play as the shoe. Dad's not here. He's always the shoe." And yeah, you know. There, it's a saying for a reason. Families that play Monopoly together get really angry with each other together and end up deciding, I guess we're just not going to play any board game now together. The fact that that game was literally made to point out how bad capitalism is and to be so boring and tedious that people would, would hate the sort of thing, and then capitalists took it over and were like, let's everybody, you know, everybody capitalist now. Yeah, that is, that is one of many examples of capitalism. Yeah, managing to, to swallow up forces of resistance. And yeah, at the very, very end, Carmen calls Marcos. Have I mentioned... So, the actress is named Michelle Ventimiglia. Apparently not, you know, related to Milo. I want to say it's Milo. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's spelled slightly differently. Um, she is amazing. She does such a solid job. You know, the the... Oh, hold on, that's not the right link. There we go. Um, 
yeah, she was she was like 24, 25 when this episode was was filmed. Just fantastic, you know. She really you buy that this woman was raised to be a mob leader, you know, and yeah, just ruthless. And yeah, she tells Marcos, if you don't help me, my next call is to Sentinel Services. Like, holy crap. Just, yeah, that's, wow. So that's, yeah, really looking forward to seeing the the payoff to, to that. And let's see. Yeah, so IMDb trivia. John Proudstar's tattoo is reminiscent of the chest design on the classic blue and red he wore. And derived from the face of a clock, got your six is military terminology used to indicate that one is covering a fellow soldier's back. There are a couple of goofs. I don't find them super interesting, so I'm not going to get into them. The next episode I will cover tomorrow and yeah some some really great quotes that was me dropping the keyboard like a dunce yeah some really great the quotes for this episode in the episodes I'm to be quotes section and let's see yeah the the Yeah, I like you know, Kate saying nothing says father-son bonding like breaking into a federal building. And yeah, the the exchange, the X-Men said a war is coming. They didn't say we'd win. 